The story starts with a young guy named Makoto. He suddenly wakes up in a strange classroom that's kinda like a prison. The windows are covered with metal, and there's a camera watching them all the time. Makoto feels confused and scared. He goes to a gym and finds 14 other students who are just as confused as him. One of them is Sayaka, someone he knew from junior high. There are also others like Yasuhiro, Hifumi, Kiyotaka, Junko, Chihiro, Celestia, Mondo, Leon, Aoi, Sakura, Tuko, Biakoya, and Kyoko. But before they can figure out what's going on, a weird character shows up. It's a black and white teddy bear called Monokuma. Monokuma tells them something really scary. They're stuck in this school forever, and the only way to get out is by killing one of the other students. This news makes the group really upset, especially Mondo, who gets really angry and tries to attack the strange bear. But something unexpected happens, the bear explodes when Mondo throws it. Right after that, another Monokuma appears, and it doesn't seem bothered by Mondo's anger. It's like a warning to everyone there. Realizing that their situation is serious, the students split up to explore the school. They hope to find a way out. Celestia and Mondo check the main entrance, but it's really strong and can't be opened. Sakura and Aowa find a staircase, but it's blocked by a tough metal barrier. Meanwhile, Chihiro finds a kitchen with a lot of food. Monokuma had promised to give them essential things, and it seems like he kept his word for the food at least. After some quiet days in the school, the students were trying to deal with the strange situation they were in. They got together to talk about how to escape. But then, Monokuma showed up again. He said he was bored because they weren't doing much. To make things more interesting, he gave each student a video to watch. These videos were meant to make them really want to get out of there. In Makoto's video, he saw his home and it looked like it had been messed up, which made him worried about his family. Next to him, Sayaka saw her video and got so upset that she screamed and ran away. Makoto was worried about her, so he went after her to try to comfort her. Later in his room, Makoto noticed that the school had given him a sword and some other things that seemed like they could be used for something bad. Sayaka, still upset, came to see Makoto. She told him that someone had knocked on her door, but when she checked, there was no one there. She felt scared and asked if they could switch rooms for the night. Makoto agreed because he wanted to help her feel safe. The next morning, all the students gathered as usual, but Sayaka wasn't there. Makoto got worried and hurried to her room, which used to be his room. He saw signs that something bad had happened. There were marks on the walls, and everything was messed up. The worst part was when he went into the bathroom and found Sayaka dead with a knife in her belly. It was clear that someone had followed Monokuma's terrible rules and killed her. Because the murder happened in Makoto's room, the other students started to suspect him. They all met in the gym and started asking Makoto questions. Things got really tense. Then, Monokuma showed up and confirmed that one of them had killed Sayaka. The tricky bear explained the scary rules. If a student kills someone and doesn't get caught, they can go free. But if the others figure out who the killer is, that person will be executed. If they make the wrong guess, everyone else will be in danger except the real murderer. Junko couldn't stand these strange rules, so she bravely attacked Monokuma. But she paid a terrible price for rebelling. She was hit by a lot of spears and died because she broke the school's rules. After that, Monokuma gave the students some time to investigate Sayaka's death. Makoto and Kyoko worked together to find out what happened. They looked at every little thing, like scratches on the floor and walls, a mysterious message near the crime scene, and different clues like ripped clothes and broken glass orbs. They were really determined to solve the mystery of the murder. It was time to make some decisions, so all the students gathered in a courtroom. They needed to talk about the proof they found and figure out who killed Sayaka. Kiyotaka was the first to mention something important. The knife in Sayaka's body looked a lot like a knife from the kitchen that was missing. He thought that maybe the killer took the knife from the kitchen before doing the bad thing. Kiyotaka started to suspect Makoto and thought he might be the murderer but Elwe defended Makoto. She remembered that on the night of the murder, she and Sakura were in the kitchen, and Sayaka came in by herself. Kyoko, who always notices things, brought up another important piece of proof. She showed the group a message that seemed to be from Sayaka. After looking at it carefully, it seemed like Sayaka had planned to do a bad thing herself. She had made a plan to switch rooms with Makoto, and if it had worked, Makoto would have been blamed for what she did. But something unexpected happened, and Makoto didn't follow her plan. This news surprised everyone, and it became clear that Makoto didn't do anything wrong. The mystery got even more confusing, 
and the students had to figure out who the real murderer was. Shortly after that, the trial got even more intense when Makoto explained what he thought Sayaka's message meant. At first, it looked like a bunch of random numbers, but when you turned it upside down, you could see the name Leon. This made Leon the main suspect. Leon tried really hard to defend himself, but Makoto had more proof. They found pieces of a shirt in the incinerator room. It looked like someone tried to burn it to hide the evidence, but some parts didn't burn. Because Leon was good at baseball, he might have been the only one who could throw the shirt past the iron grid like that. With all this evidence against him, Leon was in big trouble. Monokuma didn't waste any time and executed him in a really ironic way, using a bunch of baseballs. After the trial was over, life at the school continued. Monokuma decided to open up the second floor, which had been locked before. This meant students could use a library, a swimming pool, and other fun places. For a little while, things were peaceful. But that peace didn't last long. Monokuma, who never liked things to be quiet, gathered the students again. This time, he tried to push them into doing something bad by blackmailing them. He gave each student a paper that had their deepest secrets and embarrassing things from their past. Monokuma told them they had to commit a murder the next 24 hours, or he'd show the whole world their secrets. The students felt a lot of pressure. The next day, something shocking happened. Makoto and Biakuya found Chihiro's lifeless body in the women's locker room. She was hanging there with an electrical cable tied around her wrists, and it looked really creepy. All the students came to see what happened. They realized Chihiro had been hit with a barbell because of her injuries. They also saw that the electrical cable was the same as the ones they usually find in the library. Plus, there was a strange message written in blood on the wall near her. Celestia then said something important. She saw Chihiro the night before carrying a bag with workout clothes, but now the bag was gone. Biakoya thought about all the evidence and had a theory. He said this might be the work of a famous serial killer called Genocide or CO. This killer is known for leaving similar messages at her crime scenes and doing things like this. During the trial, Bita Kuya explained his theory. He said that genocide or CO was actually another side of Tuko. When they questioned Tuko about it, she turned into genocide or CO and strongly denied it. She said she did kill people, but she always used scissors to do it, not electrical cables. Makoto was thinking really hard, and he remembered what Celestia said about Chihiro's workout clothes bag. He realized that workout clothes come in different colors, so he thought maybe the killer was wearing the same color as Chihiro, like they were working out together. Then Bondo by accident said that the workout clothes were black, which was different from what Chihiro was wearing. This made everyone suspicious because only the murderer would know the exact color of Chihiro's workout clothes. Mondo's guilt was becoming more obvious. When Kiyotaka confronted him, Mondo couldn't hold it in anymore and admitted to the murder. He killed Chihiro because he was afraid that a secret he had would come out if Chihiro stayed alive. Mondo had a troubled past with his older brother, who was a famous motorcycle racer. Mondo was jealous of his brother's fame and caused a crash on purpose that killed his brother. This dark secret caused a chain of events that led to the tragedy at the school. After Mondo confessed to killing Chihiro, Monokuma executed him in a really horrible way. They strapped him to a motorcycle inside a huge electrified sphere, and he died in a shocking way. Later on, Monokuma opened up more places in the school, like recreation rooms and laboratories. But Monokuma was never happy with the students getting along, so he pushed them even more. He made a tempting offer, a reward of 10 billion yen for anyone who could commit a murder, without anyone finding out. Then something really surprising happened. Or said she saw Chihiro's ghost in the bathroom. This made everyone curious and a little scared, so they went to check the bathroom. They found a hidden laptop that Chihiro had used before she died. When they turned it on, they met an artificial intelligence named Alter Ego, which was made by Chihiro. They learned that the laptop was hidden in a locker in the dressing room because there the cameras couldn't watch them. But there was a problem. Some of the stuff on the laptop was locked and they couldn't see it. Then, to everyone's surprise, Kyoko managed to show them a strange photo from the laptop. It had Chihiro, Mondo, and Leon together in it. 
This didn't make sense because they thought they didn't know each other before they came to the school. This photo made them question what was really going on, what they remembered, and how tricky Monokuma's plans were. Every morning, the students would meet in the school cafeteria. But one day, some students weren't there. This worried the ones who were present, so they decided to search all the rooms. Oa found Celestia, who had been hurt by something called a justice hammer, and was unconscious. Luckily, Celestia wasn't seriously hurt, and she told them that Hifumi had been taken by the attacker. The only clue she had was that the kidnapper went upstairs. Makoto, Sakura, and Aoi quickly went to the second floor with this information. Sadly, they found Hifumi there, hurt by the same justice hammer. He was bleeding, but he was still breathing. Makoto left to tell the other students about this, but he saw something shocking. Sakura and Biakoya were helping Tuko, who was unconscious, and they found Kiyotaka, who had sadly passed away from being hit by the justice hammer. The group rushed to check on Hifumi, but he was gone, and they didn't know how. Celestia was already scared, and this made her even more frightened. She worried that they might end up like their friends who were hurt or gone. So they started looking all over the school to find Hifumi and Kiyotaka. They eventually found them in the art room. Before Hifumi passed away, he said the name Yasuhiro, which made them think he might be the attacker. They also noticed that Kyoko was missing during the search, and it made them wonder if she had something to do with what happened. While Makoto was looking for Kyoko, she suddenly appeared and showed them a locker near the pool. Inside, they found Yasuhiro stuck in a robot costume. It is officially not my day. <laughs> After they got him out, Yasuhiro explained that he had been tricked into going to the art room the night before, and someone attacked him. When he woke up, he was in that strange costume, locked in the locker. The note that brought him there had disappeared. Makoto and Kyoko were investigating more, and they found some important clues. They saw a torn piece of paper in Kiyotaka's hand, blood on a trolley wheel, and Hifumi's glasses. During the trial, Celestia blamed Yasuhiro. She said Hifumi mentioned his name before he died, and there was a paper with robot designs in Yasuhiro's room that made it seem like he did the bad thing. But Makoto didn't think Yasuhiro was guilty. He showed that the writing on the paper didn't match Yasuhiro's handwriting. Makoto had a different idea. He thought that Hifumi, even though he was a victim, might have been involved in the crime at first. Makoto believed Hifumi helped move Kiyotaka's heavy body using the trolley. But after they moved the body, the real person behind it all turned against Hifumi and attacked him. They found Hifumi's glasses with blood on them. They were dirty when they first found him, but clean when they found his body in the art room. This made it seem like he cleaned them so he could see better while moving Kiyotaka's body. While they were trying to solve the crime, Makoto remembered something strange. Celestia had mentioned a detail about how the killer did things, specifically about Kiyotaka, even before they knew what happened to him. Makoto found this suspicious. He asked Celestia to show her student card, and when she couldn't explain the inconsistencies in her story, she confessed. She did it all for the 10 billion yen prize. She wanted to use the money to build a fancy castle where she could have lots of servants. Because she confessed, she had to face the punishment. Monokuma, the one behind this strange game they were in, had a special way to punish her. They tied her up and set her on fire in front of everyone. And if that wasn't enough, a truck suddenly appeared and hit her, making sure she didn't survive. After the scary incident, Kyoko decided it was time to tell Makoto about something she found. She took him to the men's bathroom on the second floor, and there was a surprising secret. Behind one of the stalls, there was a hidden door that led to a room full of books. But the secrets in that room didn't last long. When Makoto was looking at the books, someone with a mask knocked him out. When he woke up, all the revealing books were gone. Later on, Makoto saw something strange. Monokuma and Sakura seemed to be having a serious talk in a hidden room. Makoto was curious, so he tried to listen in and hear what they were saying, hoping to learn more about the mysteries in the school. After they made progress with a recent death case, Monokuma opened up the fourth floor for the students to explore. Makoto and the others were excited to see what was up there. They found different rooms like a lab, a music room, a computer room, and the principal's office, which was locked. After they checked things out, they gathered in a changing room. They chose this room because it was not watched by the school's cameras. There they used Chihiro's laptop, known as Alter Ego. They saw a surprising picture on it. Celestia, Hifumi, and Sayako were all together and looked happy. While they were looking at the picture, 
Monokuma's voice came over the school speaker. He called all the students to the gym. This time, it wasn't about doing something bad. Monokuma revealed that Sakura was actually his spy. She was supposed to tell him what the other students were doing. This was a big shock, especially for Aoi, who thought Sakura was her friend. Aoi hoped Sakura would deny it, but she didn't. Sakura said that if the students didn't do anything wrong, she would have to do something. Then, she left without saying anything else, and it left everyone feeling heavy-hearted. The day after they found out about Sakura, Kyoko and Makoto had a plan. They wanted to use Alter Ego to find out more about the outside world. But there was a problem. Alter Ego needed an internet connection. Luckily, Kyoko remembered seeing an internet connection in the secret room on the second floor near the bathroom. Makoto hurried to the room and got Alter Ego online. The eye gave them some hope and hinted that they might escape from the school nightmare soon. Later on, while Makoto was doing laundry, Kyoko came to him in a hurry. She signaled for him to follow her to the recreation room. Makoto was confused but trusted Kyoko, so he followed her quickly. When they got there, they saw Aoi looking worried and trying to call the Sakura, who was locked in a room. Worried about what might happen, Makoto broke the glass on the door and removed the chair blocking the way. The scene inside was really sad. Sakura wasn't moving, and Aoi was crying a lot. She tried to keep herself together and said she would tell the others. Kyoko, who was good at solving things, started looking at the scene. She saw a mark on Sakura's head, which meant she was hit not once, but twice, with something hard. Kyoko also noticed some blood near Sakura's mouth and yellow powder on her shoes. After Sakura's sad death, Oi accused Yasuhiro, Biakoya, and Tuko. She remembered that they had all talked to Sakura before she died. To find out the truth and decide who was the suspect, Monokuma made them have a trial. Oi accused Yasuhiro, Tuko, and Biakoya in the courtroom. But Tuko tried to save herself by saying that Yasuhiro was the one who killed Sakura. She told a story about how Sakura called her, and she hid in a locker instead of talking to her. She said she saw Yasuhiro hit Sakura the bottle. Yasuhiro didn't say he didn't do it, but he said he only hit her once. Then Tuko admitted that when she thought she got away without Sakura seeing her, Sakura saw her and scared her, so she hit Sakura on the head with another bottle. However, what Yasuhiro and Tuko said wasn't enough to prove they were guilty of killing Sakura. In the room, Sakura was sitting down, and the door was locked, but both Tuko and Yasuhiro said they left before she died. Things got more complicated when Biakoya showed a new piece of evidence, a bottle of poison hidden with some protein containers. He said always switch the poison with the protein to kill Sakura, knowing she would drink it without question. But even with this idea, Makoto felt like something didn't make sense in the accusations. Kyoko looked closer and found a piece of glass in the poison bottle. This made them think that Aoi might have switched the bottles during the chaos when they found Sakura's body. Kyoko's careful investigation helped them understand better what happened before Sakura's death. Oi decided to tell the truth about what she did. She did it because she was desperate and wanted to end the strange game in the school. She wanted to end their suffering by making them all get executed, which was a big sacrifice. They realized that Sakura's death was her own choice because she felt really guilty about being a spy for Monokuma. Monokuma, who watched over the trial and everything that happened, agreed with what the students found out. But then, in a surprising move, he said he wanted to execute someone unexpected, Alter Ego. Alter Ego was an artificial intelligence in Chihiro's laptop, and it had secretly been using the internet. Monokuma found out about it and wanted to get rid of it. After the trial, Kyoko asked Monokuma about what he knew about Alter Ego, and he bragged that he had known about it for a while. Like always after the trial, Monokuma let them explore a new part of the school. The fifth floor had new mysteries and rooms. Yasuhiro found a big garden, a peaceful place in the middle of the school. But Biakoya found a classroom that looked like a mess and reminded him of a slaughterhouse. While they were exploring the fifth floor, Tuko found a military knife. Because Tuko had a split personality and was once a famous serial killer called Genocide or Steo. Biakoya thought it was better if Makoto, who they trusted, kept the knife to avoid any problems or fights. The mood in the school changed when Monokuma got really angry and called the students to the gym. Usually, Monokuma was either mean and playful or scary and tricky, but this time he was just really mad. The reason for his anger wasn't because his plans failed or because his game was messed up. It was because something he cared about got stolen. 
He talked about it, but he didn't say exactly what it was, so the students were confused and worried. Later on, Kyoko told Makoto secretly that she had the key that Monokuma was looking for. The key had a picture of Monokuma on it, and that meant she was the one who took it. She got the key when she went to the principal's room, which was supposed to be locked. She thought that room might have important clues. When she looked in there, she found more than just the key. She found out about a 16th student, Ikusuba Mukuro, who seemed to be connected to everything that was happening. Mukuro might be the one controlling Monokuma and making them go through all these terrible things. Kyoko asked Makoto for help in distracting Monokuma so she could explore the unknown parts of the school. She thought these places might have more truths about Mukuro and the tough situation they were in. Makoto agreed to help but told Kyoko that her safety was the most important thing. She promised to be careful. There was no time to waste, so Makoto tried to talk to Monokuma about the missing thing to keep it busy. But Monokuma didn't care and ignored him, which messed up Makoto's plan. While Makoto was trying to keep Monokuma busy, Kyoko was busy looking for information in hidden parts of the school that might help them escape. The next morning was weird and made Makoto worried. He noticed that the military knife was gone which was a tool they thought would keep them safe. Instead of telling the others, Makoto kept it a secret. He thought if he told them, they might get scared and not trust each other. Then, something surprising happened in the gymnasium. Monokuma stopped working. This gave them a chance to do something. Biakoya, who always liked to take charge, came up with a plan to get into the principal's room, which was locked. But before they could do that, something else happened. Tuko's other personality, Genocide or Show, came out and said they found a dead body in the garden. So, they had to deal with that first. When they heard about the body with a mask, everyone rushed over to see. The clothes on the body were still wet with blood, so it must have been there recently. Tuko tried to take off the mask to see who it was, but the body suddenly exploded, making it impossible. However, Biakuya noticed something important. There was a special tattoo on the body's arm and a key that could open a specific locked room. They used the key to enter a room with many surveillance cameras. It seemed like Monokuma's control center, where they could see every part of the school. Then, Monokuma dropped a bombshell. Every death in the school had been shown to the outside world. With this shocking revelation, Monokuma wanted to have a trial right away to find out who killed the person with the mask. During the trial, many started suspecting Kyoko. She wasn't around when they found the body, and they discovered evidence in her room that suggested she might have used arrows which matched how the masked person died. Kyoko denied it, but her lack of a solid alibi made her defense weak. As the trial went on, Makoto noticed some strange things, like how Monokuma didn't want to reveal who the masked victim was. But then, Monokuma suddenly accused Makoto, and everyone voted against him. After the intense trial, Makoto was in a dangerous situation. He was in a classroom with a scary machine that could shred him, just when things seemed hopeless, Alter Ego the AI stepped in and stopped the machine, saving Makoto. But instead of setting him free, they threw him into a trash pit. Now how do I get out of here? Makoto was really tired and confused in this strange place. But he didn't have to be alone for long because Kyoko came to help him. She explained that she had to accuse him earlier because she thought Monokuma was after her, and she wanted to protect herself. Together, they got out of the garbage pit and faced Monokuma again. Monokuma gave them a challenge. If they could find the school's secret, everyone would be saved. But if they failed, everyone would be in big trouble. Makoto and Kyoko were determined to take on the challenge and find the secret. While Makoto was dealing with Monokuma's challenge, Aoi and the other students were feeling really bad about voting against him. But then, to their surprise, Makoto came back safe and sound. He explained Monokuma's challenge, and they all wanted to work together to find the truth and escape from this place. Monokuma kept his promise and unlocked the principal's office for everyone. They thought this was the key to solving the school's mysteries. When Makoto and Kyoko went inside, they found a hidden compartment, and inside it was something really disturbing. A box with the remains of the former principal. As they continued their investigation, Makoto stumbled upon a memory card. This card held video interviews of all the students talking with the principal, where it looked like they agreed to stay in the school. But just when they were about to watch the whole thing and figure out what it meant, Monokuma showed up unexpectedly. He quickly smashed the video player to keep them from seeing any more. This left the students with even more questions about their past and the school's dark secrets. Despite this setback, Makoto was determined to find the truth. 
In his relentless search, he found a locked locker. Using the principal's cell phone, which seemed to have the power to unlock it, he discovered a notebook that belonged to Kyoko. Interestingly, the notebook contained plans to turn the school into a safe place for all the students to live. Meanwhile, Biakuya was busy investigating in the principal's office. He found some interesting details about Ikusuba Mukuro, who, as it turns out, was a highly skilled mercenary. This discovery added another layer of mystery to their already perplexing situation. While they were all engrossed in their investigations, Monokuma showed up once again. This time, he handed out a photo to each student. The reactions were immediate and intense. The photos contained shocking information that left them all in disbelief, prompting even more questions about their past and the true story behind their time in the school. During the final trial, the tension reached its peak as the truth slowly came to light. Makoto was convinced that the real culprit behind Mukuro's murder was also the mastermind behind the entire twisted situation they were trapped in. His visit to the morgue had uncovered a shocking detail. Mukuro's body had stab wounds. This was perplexing because based on their memories, it was supposed to be Junko who got impaled by a spear during a scuffle with Monokuma. Makoto couldn't shake off his suspicions about Junko. He believed she faked her own death to secretly manipulate the chaos in the school. The mysterious photos that Monokuma had shared, where Junko's face was always hidden, added more evidence to his theory. As Makoto accused Junko, the student who was supposed to be dead dramatically entered the courtroom. Things got even more complicated when she revealed that Mukuro, the student who had been killed, was actually her twin sister. Aoi, like many others, couldn't understand why Junko would want to kill her own sister. Junko's response was chilling. She claimed that she grew tired of Mukuro. In another surprising twist, Monokuma revealed a shocking truth. They had all been at the school for two years. This was hard to believe because they all felt like it had only been a few weeks due to some kind of memory manipulation. To support this revelation, Monokuma showed a photo of all of them together, suggesting that they had been classmates in the past. The courtroom was filled with shock and disbelief. In the climax, Junko and Monokuma reveal a video showing the outside world in chaos. Their twisted goal was to spread despair all over the world. They made things even worse by broadcasting the students at the school forcing them to turn against each other. They also learned that the air outside had become poisonous. The only thing keeping them alive in the school was an air filter in a chemical lab. But there was a condition. If Junko died, the filter would turn off, and they would all die. However, Makoto, never giving up, refused to be scared by Junko's threats. He encouraged his friends to stay hopeful and not let Junko win. When it was time to vote, they all agreed that Junko was guilty and sentenced her to execution. In dramatic twist, the show depicted Junko's painful execution leading to her death. In the final scenes, Makoto and his friends gather the courage to open the school's gates. Even though they don't know what's waiting for them outside, they decide to face it together. The story ends with a hopeful but emotional note. The moral of the story is if your school locks you in and airs your drama worldwide, remember to always check the air filters.